Hey guys, and welcome to The Real DDP, Diamond Dallas Pages, Wrestling Wednesdays. That's right, if you if you want to see the whole video, if you're just catching us on YouTube, you want to catch the whole thing, go to .com, and you can see the pictures, the videos, and all the stuff. Now, originally, when I put this together, I was going to tell the story how I came into WCW as a manager for... The Fabulous Freebirds, and also for Scott Hall, but I realized that's too long. So, <laughs> I mean, there's too much to tell. So what I'm going to do is tell the Freebirds story this week and Scott Hall's story next week, and I probably might put the video up there twice. I'll show some pictures. I'll come up with some other stuff for Scott as well. Maybe I'll search more stuff for the Freebirds, because that's what I really want to look for. We haven't had time to find enough of that. And I'm going to actually call Michael P.S. Hayes and see if he'll send me some stuff, because I just, I mean, the birds were amazing. So... The whole, you know, I always try to put at the end of the video, um, I try to put a little thing like a, uh, an inspirational quote or whatever. So this time I'm going to put it in the beginning because um, it's a lesson that if you learn this lesson, man, it'll change your life. Now here it is. A lot of people will tell you it's all about who you know or who knows you. I believe it's all about who's willing to say they know you. Who's willing to put their name on the line for you? In other words, who actually really cares about you? Now, when you're trying to meet people that can help you or whatever, see, I, I've done a lot of that. But if I don't truly like the person, if I think they're a jerk, I don't care what they can do for me. This is me personally. I mean, I will not associate with them. But if I find that we have something mutual and I respect them and they respect me, well, then I take it to a different level and I, and I become involved and get to a point that people will actually put their name on the line for you. But I will do the same for them. And most likely I'll do it before they do it for me. So that being said, how did I come to get the gig in WCW? Well, if you remember back a couple weeks ago when I was talking about meeting Dusty Rhodes and how when I came into Florida Championship Wrestling, I worked one day a week. But I came up another day week just to sit down and talk to the dream. I mean, I don't think there's a guy who knows more about wrestling than Dusty Rhodes, period. I mean, that's one of the reasons why some of these young, these young guys are coming to WWE right now. And you're going, God, that guy's great and he can talk and da 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 Well, he's being trained how to wrestle by Steve Gator Kern. <laughs> and he's being trained how to talk by the American dream, Dusty Rhodes. So back to who's willing to say they know you. When Dream left Florida Championship Wrestling, he went to the WWF. He stayed there, did his stint, and then he was offered the book in WCW. Now, I'd stayed in touch with him this whole time. Now, I didn't want to bother him. I call it being pleasantly persistent. Don't make yourself a pain in the ass. Another key, <laughs> key lesson there. Because once you become a pain in the ass, then they don't ever want to take your call. So, the bottom line is, I developed a relationship not just with Dream, but his wife, Michelle. And she was a sweetheart. And to be perfectly honest, if it wasn't for Michelle, and I've told her this before, <laughs> I doubt if I ever would have had the relationship with Dusty Rhodes. And without Dusty Rhodes, there is no Diamond Dallas Page. So what happens because of one caring on the phone and talking, and not just making conversation, actually caring about what we're talking about. So uh, that's a huge part, caring. And obviously you guys know I do, and a lot of different people, or there would be no YRG. <laughs> I mean, if you go to Team YRG, I talk to everybody, and any of the fans, they know that I actually really did care. So it comes off. It'll come off on you when you're trying to, to, to go somewhere or you're trying to live a dream. So back to WCW. Dusty comes in, and I tell him that, you know, I'm at the end of my nightclub run in, in Florida, and it's time for me to make a change. I, I believe i got to reinvent myself every X amount of years. And the nightclub business was great, but I, I was getting married at the time, and I knew that if I stayed there, there was no way I was going to be able to stay married in the nightclub business. So uh, um, I was either going to move to Chicago or move to Atlanta. And I said, Dusty, where, where do you think I should go? You know, more or less saying, hey, come to Atlanta is what I wanted him to say. And that's what he said. He said, if I was you, I'd move to Atlanta. But he goes, I can't give you any kind of guarantee, kid. I can offer you 350 bucks a night, no guarantee of dates. He goes, it's up to you. And I went for it, man. I mean, this was a dream to actually come into WCW, which I've been working towards. First three and a half years of being Diamond Dallas Page, it cost me money. Just like this whole run I've been doing with YRG for this last seven years, cost me money. I haven't made a dime yet. 
But in time, everything catches up to it. If you, God doesn't put those walls in front of you to hold you out, God puts those walls in front of you to see how much you really want it. And I wanted it. So I come in there. Again, it comes down to who's willing to say they know you. That's the theme of this whole blog, this one here. Michael P.S. Hayes. I was lucky enough to get to, to hang with Michael. And I never realized how much we were really alike. It was amazing to me. Um, when I worked in the AWA, I told you, we worked once a month. We did four TV shows, and that was the month. And we, once a month, I'd show up in Vegas. But we were getting ready for a pay-per-view. So during this pay-per-view run, there was one weekend where we hit the road. And I got to be one, spend one of those like 30-hour periods with Michael Hayes. Rode with him, rode like four hours. We drank, we talked, we talked about the business. And he realized that I wasn't in it to be a TV star. I was in it because I loved wrestling since I was a kid. And he gave me his number, and occasionally I talked to him. And he would actually call me back, which is huge. <laughs> and um, I'll never forget him for it. And uh, when I came in to WCW, Dream pulled him aside and said, you know, let's do something different with you guys. You know, what about Mike? What about Diamond Dallas Page being your manager? Now, P.S. Hayes, to, to me, one of the best talkers ever, period. Uh, for him to let me come on with Jimmy Jam Garvin, who's his tag team partner, who's one of the other greatest talkers ever in the 80s. Amazing, you know, both of them. They both shut up, put their backs to the camera as the camera shoots on me and then comes back on the birds and their backs are to the, t are to the, to the, to the mic, which is like unheard of. It was like a huge... Huge prop for me, and uh, to be able to have that run with the birds was amazing. I learned so much from Hayes and Garvin. You want to talk about ribs? See, I tried to fit the Scott Hall and Freebird thing together. There's just too many great stories. I've got too many great stories to tell about Scott Hall. I'll be telling next week, but uh, this week, Freebirds. Now, the birds, of course, they sit up in the front, I'm in the back, right? So, you know, they got that little leg, you know, that little armrest that you have when you're driving down the road and you can have your elbow on it. So they both were there smoking and driving. So I got this bad left, no, bad right knee. And I would take my leg and I'd put the foot up in between it. Now, I don't think I'm bothering anybody. You know, I'm being respectful. <laughs> we're talking and all of a sudden, yeah! Jimmy Jam Garvin's got a lighter and he's just lowered right, uh, without even selling it, right under my foot. <laughs> and gave me literally a hot foot. Oh, my God, we drank so much. Oh, being with those guys, you had to have your drinking shoes on. Thank God I came out of the nightclub business because I could still drink a lot, and you needed to be able to because they could go, and they had a great time, and their families would get together, and Michael's wife, Lo, she was a sweetheart, and, you know, we went, we went out all the time, and it was, it, was a, it was a really great run together. And I got to tell you, when it came down to the Freebirds, when I'm finally going to leave to go to uh, actually, you know, get in the ring and start to train, I'll never forget our last night together was uh, in Chattanooga. And they have this big blue screen there. I'll never forget. That's the screen before you walk out, the curtain before you walk out in front of the people. And I looked at those two guys, and I go, you guys know I'm done managing you, right? And they're like, yeah, man, sorry, dude. I go, well, you know what? I'm going after the dream. I said, I'm going, I'm, you know, what are you talking about? I said, I'm going, I'm going after the, the dream. I'm, I'm going to wrestle. And they're like, what? I go, I'm going to the power plant. I'm going to learn how to wrestle. P.S. laughed so hard, he fell down laughing, crying laughing, while Jimmy's laughing. I'm just like, guys, fuck you. <laughs> and I walked to the ring and did my thing. Another thing they did to me, I gotta tell you another thing they did. One time there was a battle royal, and they wanted to make sure that, you know, I got, you know, didn't wear my nice stuff, so they gave me these tights. So I'm thinking, why are they doing that? And long story short, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna save that story for another time, but I'll just tell you this. It's involved with the Stein, with Rick Steiner, and the rib that they pulled on me was priceless. Uh, and it was all in good fun. It was a great time. Everybody had, you know, it was, it's a brotherhood. And I'll, so I'll tell you some other stories about Michael P.S. Hayes later. He was an amazing cat. Remember, it's not about who you know or who knows you. It's who's willing to say they know you, monkey. 
All right, that's all I got for this. I'm going to get under the 10-minute limit. I'm out of here. See ya.